there will be spoilers ad for Black Mirror seasons 1 through 2. The Waldo moment focuses on the failed comedian Jamie Salter, who operates the blue cartoon bear named Waldo. After the so-called success of the fake interview with political candidate Liam Monroe, the network wants to give Waldo his own show. The team behind Waldo puts together a marketing campaign where Waldo runs for office. And it's Black Mirror! So as we all know, things go south real quick. Jamie refuses to let his creation become a political pawn, but is removed from his position as Waldo becomes a successful global political entertainment product. That is a mouthful. I'm just gonna go ahead and pause this video to address the small easter egg in the room. Or in this case, the small easter egg on the skyline. Right over here, next to all the Waldo advertisements, there's an ad for Wraith Babes featuring Abby Khan from the episode 15 Million Merits. Right, just right there. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, let's take a look at our candidates. Representing the Conservative Party is Leah Monroe, your typical wealthy politician who can afford nice, expensive campaigns. So you know, perhaps the most traditional candidate out of the bunch. The Labour Party candidate, Gwendolyn Harris, is simply running to get her foot in the door, using this election as a stepping stone in her political career, what was referred to as a glass of water. And then we have the Independent Party, Waldo, who is running an anti-politics campaign, turning the election into one big joke. The title, The Waldo Moment, is most likely named after the Portilla Moment, which is a term indicating a sudden drastic change in a political election, a term derived from the 1997 UK general election where former Conservative cabinet minister Michael Portillo lost what was considered his secure Enfield Southgate seat to Labour Party candidate Stephen Twigg. At the time, it appeared Twigg had no chance of defeating the Conservative candidate who held the majority. However, Twigg received just over a thousand votes more than Portillo. This moment marked a significant change as the Conservative Party, who previously held the majority, was defeated by a landslide in votes as the Labour Party then became the majority. A Waldo is another name for a remote manipulator, a hand-like mechanism someone operates to control a machine or computer image like a puppet. The actual term Waldo originated from Robert A. Heinlein's 1942 short story Waldo, about a guy named Waldo who is extremely weak, but uses his money and intelligence to build a very powerful robot that he controls by using a glove and a harness. To get even more meta, Robert A. Heinlein published this short story under the pseudonym Anson McDonald. So the title, The Waldo Moment, stands for a puppet unexpectedly winning an election by a landslide. Now I know Waldo ends up losing the election, but it's also implied that if he entered the race earlier, he probably could have won. Regardless, in the end we see that Waldo has accepted excelled beyond local elections, and has become a successful global political entertainment product. It's no doubt Waldo is a blatant metaphor for the way politicians put on this mask for the public. When Waldo has Monroe in his cave, Monroe explains, well, a politician is someone who tries to make the world a fairer place. And Waldo responds, like Batman. In the next scene, we are introduced to the producer Jack Napier. Jack Napier is also the name of the Joker from Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film. The Joker was Jack's alter ego, and in the Waldo moment, Jack Napier is the immoral side of Waldo, while Jamie is the side that's, you know, more level-headed. So Jack Napier is Waldo's alter ego. Jack Napier is someone who is money-hungry and ends up taking over Waldo, while the public is unaware of how corrupt the political figure has become because the facade has remained the same. By the way, since we're already talking about Jack, during the brainstorming session with the team behind Waldo, we get to see this shot of Jack's phone. On his feed, you can see a tweet from the series graphic art director, Erica McEwen. And I know that's the one Easter egg I left out of my every Easter egg in Black Mirror season 2 video, and here's me acknowledging that I'm a complete fraud, and my entire channel is just one big failure. And speaking of Easter eggs, the news channel we see throughout the episode is UKN. The same news channel from the National Anthem and White Bear. The headlines at the bottom of the UKN news broadcast in the Waldo moment are the same headlines used at the end of the National Anthem. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Waldo is intentionally not funny, and often makes us cringe. We the audience understand that his juvenile humor only appeals to the lowest common denominator. Waldo is not supposed to be likable, or Waldo-rific, he's supposed to be obnoxious. This is done to have us focus more on how the citizens behave around Waldo. At times, the way they react is shameful to say the least. But it's not all that different from the way we view comedians hosting these modern-day political 
political comedy shows or the way we view some politicians. But when entertainment becomes part of the political system, that's cause for concern. In the book Inside Black Mirror, when talking about how much of himself he put into the character of Jamie, the series creator Charlie Brooker claimed, I'd avoided ever really saying anything political. But around the time of writing The Waldo Moment, I was co-presenting Channel 4's political comedy show 10 O'Clock Live. People would go, oh, I wish you lot were running the country, or we should turf all the politicians out and get comedians to run it. And you think, no, you shun it. The success of Waldo is clearly a byproduct of everyone's dissatisfaction with the slow, mundane nature of politics. I mean bureaucracy, am I right? It's interesting that what made Waldo go viral in the first place was an outburst attacking Liam Monroe and Gwendolyn Harris for their lack of authenticity. So Jamie's rant did stem from a place of truth. However, something Charlie Brooker was alluding to is that comedians can present honest criticism but don't necessarily have the answers. And also want to make good politicians. Politics should be relatively boring, not another form of entertainment, and most certainly not a popularity contest. Waldo is closer to real-life politicians who appear to go against the established system by their almost reckless behavior and informal approach. The majority of us are tired of the same old artificial behavior we get from these more traditional politicians. You know who I'm talking about. The ones who keep saying they're dissatisfied with the way things are and want to make a change, but end up not changing anything. So when you have an aggressively honest or loose cannon public figure enter the ring, a lot of people find it exciting. They go, he, she, or they really owned that candidate last night in the debate, or they got that TV show host real good. I'm paraphrasing, I am not familiar with the young person vernacular. Later on, Gwendolyn asks Jamie, what are you for? The same question Jamie asks Liam Monroe earlier in the episode. Monroe isn't shown as a hero. Yet he still stands behind ideals and principles, and remains sort of the voice of reason in this episode. It's never specified what exactly Gwendolyn wants to do in office, however, she still comes across as someone who's wanting to create actual real change. The only thing scandalous about her is her inability to read a room, and the fact that she's running for publicity, not to win. It's not sinister like Waldo running to gain publicity, with the team behind Waldo aware that the Blue Bear isn't going to win. Gwendolyn is just navigating getting through the bureaucratic system with the understanding that this is what has to be done in order to achieve her goals. It's more of what's wrong with the political system at hand rather than what's wrong with her approach to politics. Charlie Brooker regretted not having enough time to fully flesh out the script, and to go more in depth with the rise of Waldo and the downfall of the other politicians. However, it's implied that Waldo didn't just derail Gwendolyn's campaign, but severely damaged and potentially ended her political career before it even started. A lot like my dreams, her dreams are most likely dead. Other than being vulgar, what else did Waldo accomplish for the dissatisfied voters? Spoilers! Nothing. Instead, he's entertaining them, making them laugh and giving them this false sense of gratification. So the voters feel satisfied with words that are actually hollow. The contents of the package are the same, it's just different wrapping. In fact, Waldo's appearance of anti-politics and his almost cult-like following allows for the team behind Waldo to say and do almost anything without the ramifications a regular candidate would receive. This illusion of a revolutionary who's backed by foreign powers does not have the people's interests at heart. A political leader is there to serve the public, not to be praised, idolized, or turned into a symbol, or even commodified by having their own merch. When talking about Waldo passing Gwendolyn in the election, Monroe claims, if that thing is the main opposition, then the whole system looks absurd, which it may well be, but it built these roads. Apparently, in the original script, right after he said that, the car he's in was supposed to hit a pothole. That would have been hilarious, but I like that they chose to cut away after Monroe says this because, to me, this is the most important line of dialogue in the entire episode. He's acknowledging the way we govern may have its faults, but which is worse, the present way of governing or the inverse? At least with the way things are currently running, you have somewhat of a functioning system, so going in the complete opposite direction may not be the solution because, as we've discussed earlier, it may be the same thing, just a lot worse as it lacks accountability. To me, this is a perfect episode of a philosophical sci-fi anthology series as it raises more questions than it answers. Look, I'm a simple guy. 
I like to watch Black Mirror and cry in the shower. And like Jamie, I don't necessarily like getting political, but it's Black Mirror, so you kinda have to. Regardless, in this analysis, I chose not to criticize one particular party or politician. Because what this episode is alluding to is the fact that any public figure can be corrupted and be going against everything they stand for. But don't worry, I will focus more on real-life comparisons when analyzing the Waldo moment in future videos. Because when it comes to analyzing Black Mirror, I've just just barely scratched the surface. And you thought the bear pun counter was never coming back. Well guess what, Todd? Bear pun counter's going nowhere.